Hello beautiful people, it's your girl Nasa with Expansive Taste. Here we expand our realities to ultimate greatness and learn to receive the best out of life. And I believe one of the best things that we can receive out of life is the ability to create life, also known as having children. With this being my opinion, it has disappointed me to see so many women on the internet, on TikTok, wherever. Um, a lot of women have been saying that they are child free and they really don't want to have children. And that's fine for a lot of people, but I do worry that their kind of content and their reasoning is not completely sound and it is um, influencing other young women to decide to um, not have children when really that is what it, that's part of their calling i am worried that people are getting tricked into believing that they don't want children when really they do the analogy that comes to mind is that everyone at some point has wanted to win the lottery um and so you think about how great it would be to get a million dollars or whatever but then at some point you learn that oh winning the lottery isn't that great first of all you get um your tax cuts from that and then people who win the lottery tend to lose it um and you hear all these stories about people who got won the lottery and their life didn't look that good five years later because they just blew through it and they didn't know how to be financially responsible or you learn that money doesn't make people happy and all that um you you learn that there are so many reasons as to why you shouldn't win the lottery that eventually you stop wanting to win the lottery you just stop trying or you just don't really care about it anymore and i'm not saying that you should go and buy lottery tickets but um, what I'm trying to say is that at some point there are things that you want, but because of other people's critiques or um, their own failures or whatever insecurities or doubts that they're putting into your mind, you're talking yourself out of wanting the things that you actually want. Um, and I know that even me, I knew that I wanted to be a mom. I know that I want to have children. I don't have any yet. But when I started to watch all these like child free videos, I started to like experience doubts in my own desires. Like I started thinking, oh, is it really um, that unrealistic to think about raising a child in this economy? Is it really going to be that hard? Is it, am I going to regret it like them? Did society just trick me into wanting children? Am I not going to have a fulfilled life if I decide to have children? Is it going to, derail me in some way and am i going to lose myself in motherhood is it going to be that bad those were the thoughts that were running through my mind because i was listening to other people's opinions and thoughts and beliefs and whatever um and that kind of influenced me for a moment to start self-doubting and you know doubting my ability to become a parent um which you know, eventually I got out of it and I was like, yeah, like, forget them. Like, I know what I want and I know that I want children. I don't need to worry about what they're worrying about. The main idea that I want to get across is that you shouldn't make your decisions based on fear and the fear that other people are trying to instill in you. Um, so there's a lot of fear of not being able to afford having children, a fear of not having a stable enough relationship to have um, a healthy home for children. There's the fear of losing time and missing out on life and, I don't know, missing losing yourself. It's all based out of like fear of things not working out when really instead of looking at that as a reason to just like completely miss out on the amazing blessing of having children, really you should go towards what the solutions are. Um, because for every problem that can come up, there is a solution. So the first problem could be that children are expensive to raise, but really it's about your priorities. You have to decide what you want to focus. To, like you have to decide what you want to spend your money on pretty much. Here's the thing. Um, being in America, in a very capitalist society, what we have um, forgotten is that we don't need a lot of the stuff that we think that we need. You don't need a car for every adult that is in the household. You don't need a bedroom for every child that you have. You don't need to upgrade your technology every two years. You don't need to go out to eat at all. You don't need to spend any more than $400 a month for a family um, on groceries. And yeah, there's just a whole lot that we think that we need, but really it's just a bunch of extra stuff that we have 
created to imagine that we're making our lives easier, but really we're just making our lives more expensive. We're just making it more costly. We're adding things into our lives that we really don't need, that we really could go without, and that really don't add that much more value. Um, or even we might add things that could negatively affect our lives. Like for example, going out to eat all the time. Going out to eat makes you not as healthy um, because odds are you're not ordering the salad every time or whatever. And even the salad is like way overpriced, come on. Um, but that's whatever, I'm just getting off topic. So the main reason that people say that children are expensive is because of childcare. And the, <laughs> the solution to that is very simple. Um, simply don't use childcare. Um, there are ways around this. You could have a part-time job or you could be a stay-at-home mom if you are. I'm, I'm talking to women here, okay? You could have a part-time job or you could be a stay-at-home mom. Other thing you could do, you could decide to not move so far away from family so that you can receive help when you need help. So if when you are going to work, then you could leave your kids with your grand, the grandparents or whatever, um, or your cousins or whoever. You could work around a whole lot if you just decide to live near family. And as a Haitian immigrant, that's one thing I find so odd about Americans is that um, they move so far away from home. They just move away so that they can do everything so independently and have to rely solely on themselves. And it's like, you don't have to do that. You could just stay with your parents a little longer or a whole lot longer and there's space for you and your family. And, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be so individualistic. You could actually like work together as a community. We talk about all this socialism and communism stuff, especially on TikTok, but you're not even like living it. You're not thinking about what that actually means. It means sticking with your family, not depending on the government. It's about the village, okay? Being a stay-at-home parent will immediately cut the cost of childcare. And the other thing about this is that it, you kill so many birds with one stone on this. It's because you're not driving your kid to daycare and you're not driving yourself to work, you're cutting costs on gas and um, you're cutting costs on groceries because you know you could easily package in meal prep at home um, because the thing is you know with daycare you got to send them with their lunch boxes and it can be difficult trying to figure out what to send them with because um yeah there's so many different rules and different ways that you have to prepare things and it's just so much easier when you could just like do it all at home and not have to do like prepackaged lunches or prepackaged foods um, and, you know, you can buy things in bulk and then put them in containers instead of buying the little individual like applesauce cups. You can buy a big jar of applesauce or whatever and put it in a regular bowl and that saves you like a lot of money overall. It just all adds up being able to just like have it all at home. By the way, there is so much research that suggests that kids really shouldn't be in daycare at all. It was created as like a last minute resort kind of thing um it was a first daycare was created for um the families that were very desperate like the husbands died or the mom was in living in extreme poverty or whatever and then all of a sudden we just normalized it to make it for everybody um but it was never an ideal situation um especially because kids they all they need to be is at home and to be cared for by their parents um, and they don't need to be socialized there is no benefit to being socialized um, at a very young age the general socialization that matters in the first three years of life is just around the family and i can tell you that all that happens when you decide to put a bunch of babies or toddlers together in a group they're not socializing <laughs> they might be playing next to each other but they don't really learn how to play with each other in a good way and in fact they o the only things they learn from other kids is how to behave more poorly kids learn by watching adults they learn by um, imitating adults but if kids are just imitating kids then they all teach each other the worst things honestly Kids don't really start to benefit from socializing with kids in their own age group until they're at least three. And even then, they don't have to be in the daycare or in the school all day. Um, you know, a couple hours is fine, and that's enough socialization for them at their level. 
And I know for many women, the thought of being a stay-at-home mom is very scary because um, of how they view their career and how they prioritize that. And for that, what I have to say is having children is a very time-sensitive topic. And there's a very you know, there's a small kind of window for when that can happen for you. You don't want to start thinking about having children or um, try, you know, when it's possibly too late. Um, What can happen? Like, it is possible to have kids at like, you know, 49. It's possible, but it's very, very hard. Um, And even at 42, it's very, very hard um, for a lot of people. For some people, maybe, maybe it's not, okay? But you'd never know until you're actually in that situation and maybe it's too late. Um, And so for your career, that can be before children and that can be after children. Think about how you can have your kids, like let's say, um, you know, in your late 20s or maybe early 30s, and that is enough time for you to stay at home with them in their very important first years of their lives and then by the time that your youngest is like four years old and able to go to preschool or kindergarten then you can get back into work and it's really not that big of a deal to get back into work it's fine it's fine to start your career again in your 40s that time the the door doesn't close for you you might be behind maybe um if you want to view it that way you know you're like oh i'm working entry level with a bunch of 20 year olds like I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, especially with like, if you have experience, like, you know, maybe you could still find a different position for yourself. But what can't happen is you focus on your career in your 20s and all of your 30s. And then at 41, decide that you want to have children. There is no guarantee that that is going to work for you. Um, it, it can be very hard. And I don't want you to think that you have to rely on things like IVF when you could have just planned to maybe only do 10 years in your career and then focus on being a stay-at-home mom and then go back to work when you're 40. Um, So just like a 10-year gap where you're not working. So another problem that women talk about is the loss of time. Having kids takes up so much of your time and once you're a mom, you're always a mom. And so a lot of women are thinking that having kids means that they can't party anymore, they can't go to concerts anymore, they can't do this and that and their weekends are going to be never free and they're always going to have to need to get a babysitter to do anything that they want um and what i have to say to that is that you can do it all you can have it all in your life but it just can't be at the same time and there has to be limits for each of these stages of your life and ways of viewing these stages of your life just because you don't have the freedom to party all night because you have kids it doesn't mean that your life is less than um it really does not mean that it just means you're at a different stage of your life and you need to have different priorities and different ways to imagine having fun at some point you got to realize that all these things things that you imagine are, you know, causing fun in your life, like shopping, partying, going to concerts, traveling, all these things, you know, they're fun for a moment. But at some point, you got to get bored. You got to just be like, yeah, I've had enough of that. It's like, you know, you you kind of put it on a loop and you realize you see the pattern and you might like it a little, but at some point you got to get bored and decide that you're ready for something else. I started to have all those fun experiences when I was 18. Um, And then honestly, by the time I was 21 and actually legally allowed to drink, I just, I was bored with it. Um, And I mean, I still like did it every now and then just because like, I don't know, I could and I wasn't in a position to have children yet. And so like, I just did it in like my waiting period. But at the same time, it's just like, yeah, this isn't really all that much fun anymore. You know, I don't really like being drunk. I feel hungover and I like traveling, but I don't like that my bank account is empty every time I come back. You know, that's not really that great of a f- great feeling. A third reason why people might think that having children is not worth it is because of the state of the environment and, you know, the political whatever is going on, all that stuff. The whole feeling of like not being sure about what's going on with the world. Um, and I can understand understand how scary that must be but at the same time you got to put things into perspective and especially if you are um, one of the people who are living in these first world countries like come on 
it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. Um, your parents went through harder times, maybe, I don't know. Um, your grandparents went through harder times, your great grandparents, people from a thousand years ago, three people from 2000 years ago, they had children in famines, they had children in wars, they had children in genocides. Um, they had children in all sorts of terrible situations. Um, and they did it fine. And here we are, humanity is still here after all these years. So um, the general thing that I wanna put in your mind is that if you have children, yeah, maybe maybe something will happen, um, but you're gonna make through it. You're gonna, you're gonna make it through. So the last thing that I feel is the main obstacle to all of this becoming as easy as possible is finding the right partner, finding the right person to have a family with. That is going to be your main problem. As long as you pick the right person and have the same values as them, then raising children together should be a fairly simple process. What you don't want to do is just date anybody and spend years with them and find out that they don't want children or find out that they don't want to be the sole provider there are so many different things that you can find out about a partner that makes you realize that having a family with them is just not going to work out and so you really want to like be proactive in this and actually find the right person who has the same values as you that wants to be married that wants to have children that wants to provide um, that values you as a person, someone who is a kind person, who has a good sound mind, someone who is financially responsible, someone who is um, healthy, someone who's like not an alcoholic, who's not a narcissist, someone who you actually know is going to be reliable. There are so many different attributes that you need to assess very clearly before you decide to proceed with having a relationship with them. And it can take some time to find that person and it takes even more time to figure out if that person really is who they say they are. Um, but it's got to be done. You can't date haphazardly. You have to have the ability to communicate well and um, decide with your partner like what you want your lives to be. And you have to be able to like actually talk about these things pretty much very very early in the relationship and then you give it you know you give it a little trial and if it really just does not align then you got to be able to like let it go and not keep trying to push it and try to change it into becoming something that it's not um so yeah you want to make sure that you're investing your time very wisely and yeah don't waste your time because like i said the window of like having children is very small and if the person that you are thinking of having children with is going to need like you know two years of dating before they are ready to get married then like you know you don't want to give each person two years um and like have that fail over and over and over again because you know two years turns into 10 years with five different people that just never worked out um, so you want to like, you know, put it, put it away as soon as it stops, not as soon as it stops like working, but like, as soon as you realize that, you know, it's really just not clicking, you're putting like a square into a round hole or whatever the saying is. So when you are dating, you want to make sure you're dating with intention and you are actively talking about these things that matter um you can't base a relationship on like if you have common interests like that's you don't need to have the same interests as your partner you just need to have the same values and a similar goal that is more important than um you know does this person like to watch Grey's Anatomy I don't yeah <laughs> You know, and the other main part, of course, is making sure that your partner is going to be able to financially provide. Um, and this doesn't mean that you need to date a rich man or that he needs to, you know, make at least six figures. Um, there are many families out there letting you know that they are making this thing happen with $50,000 a month as their salary. And um, I'm not saying that's what you have to do. But there are like, there are so many examples out there of people living in this economy in this current time, and they're saying, "Hey, we have a house, we have three kids, and we were able to raise them on one income of fifty thousand dollars a year." Uh, there are plenty of examples out there. It's really like about budgeting and prioritizing different things. 
um, and knowing what really, yeah, knowing what matters to you. It can't all be about, you know, being able to travel and party. Um, and if that is what you are all about, then that's cool. But just know that if you do get bored and you don't really care about this thing anymore, then you got to make sure that you are on track into turning it around before it's too late. Um, before you become infertile, before you have to resort to something like IVF or adoption or, you know, something that might not have been an ideal situation for you. So that's all beautiful people. I really hope that you enjoyed my video and that you, you know, you learned something from it. I know I said a lot of different things in each thing I can break into its own separate video or its own separate series. Um, but this is my general, these are my general beliefs on how to make having children work and how to, um, yeah, not get too scared about all these people talking about how they want to be child free because, um, it's possible. It is able to happen. It is able to work. Um, you just have to plan well. And so that's all beautiful people. Thank you so much for making it to this point. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. I really, really need your support. So that's all beautiful people. Um, I send you my love. Mwah. Bisous.